All right, so today's video is going to be talking about honing small engine cylinders. And the basic procedure for any type of engine, even a vehicle engine, you just have multiple cylinders, of course, but the basic principle is the same. And uh, I get asked about it all the time and want people wanting to know uh, more information about honing these cylinders. And I briefly talked about it and I showed it briefly in one of my re uh, rebuild videos on a 12 horse or a 10 horse Briggs. This is a 14 and a half horsepower overhead valve, as you can tell. A model 28 Briggs and Stratton. I already surfaced the deck on this. And I will go ahead and uh, hone it out. And uh, this block's in really good shape. I got this off eBay as a replacement block for mine after the counterweights broke. And you can see, you can actually still see the original factory home marks in here, but I'm just going to touch them up a little bit and true the surface because uh, I mean it does have a little bit of wear as you can see you can see some dull spots here and there and uh, I'm just going to true it up a little bit and, but the main thing is this is honing a cylinder it's not boring a cylinder boring a cylinder has to be done on a either a lathe or a milling machine to get a very true machine surface and still yet it has to be honed after it's bored out to get a true pattern and a lot of the, a lot of people want to know what the purpose of honing is you can see the marks I was talking about it's called a crosshatch pattern you can see how the, the lines cross each other and that's the, about the same pattern we're going to try to get close to it and it does several things first of all it trues up any minor, I say minor, imperfections. If you see a scratch in the cylinder, you can run your fingernail across and feel it. And honing probably isn't going to take care of it and have to be bored out to 10, 20, or 30 thousandths oversize. And you have to get an oversized piston and oversized rings. And I always use uh, oversized rings anyway, the way I can file the ring gap to get it as tight as possible to a factory uh, spec on this. Like I was saying, the main thing is this is honing a cylinder, not boring it. So if you want to bore an engine out to 10, 20, or 30 thousandths oversize, you're not going to do it with a hone. And if you do it, you're going to ruin that cylinder because it's not made to machine it out. It's just made to dress it up and create the crosshatch pattern. And the crosshatch does uh, several different things. It trues the surface, and it also provides a slight roughness to the cylinder that way the new rings can basically grind their way into place and it makes a you hear the phrase the ring seating in that's usually what they're referring to because uh, this rough surfaces surface causes uh, the rings to basically sand their way into the cylinder that way they're sealing perfectly if you ever tear, tear an engine down it's got a lot of irs you're not going to see them hone marks you're going to see a mirror like surface which uh Another name for honing a cylinder is deglazing a cylinder, which is doing the same thing. And there's a lot of debate and a lot of different techniques on honing cylinders. And while I'm thinking about it, this engine has a cast iron sleeve. A magnet will stick to the inside of the cylinder. If your engine, particularly a small engine, has an aluminum bore that the magnet won't stick to, then you don't hone it. If it's got scores and everything, it has to be bored out. That's the only thing you can do to it. Because if you hone it, you're just taking more metal away. And the rings are actually the harder material in an aluminum bore engine. So the, the, cylinder, the cylinder will fit to the rings instead of the rings fitting to the cylinder. And you usually use chrome rings on an aluminum bore engine. They're bigger anyway, so it makes up the difference the time it seats in. It's just like having a, just like having a regular set of rings and a standard bore. But... Uh, so this, you only hone cast iron bore engines. Some people will say otherwise, and if it works for you, then go for it. I'm just going by the Briggs manual and from experience. But if a magnet sticks to the cylinder, you can hone it out. If a magnet doesn't stick, it's aluminum bore, you can't hone it. Another reason you don't want to hone aluminum bore engines, particularly like motorcycle engines and stuff, they usually have a some type of coating on the cylinder wall if you hone it you will remove that coating and when you put your new rings in there you might 
you might only get an hour or two out of it before it starts wearing out and starts burning oil again. So just pay attention to your materials and everything. And you can use chrome rings in a cast iron board. It just takes longer for them everything to seat in. But the standard rings are cast iron. This is a cast iron sleeve, so they both wear in about the same with the cast iron rings. But you can use the chrome rings. They take longer to seat in, but they will hold up longer. So now let's get to the actual uh, honing process. And this is my hone. This is a Craftsman hone. And they're available in different sizes. And uh, this is just a little bit bigger than a 3 inch bore. And uh, you can see this This is, you know, huge for this. This is a, for, you can do vehicles with this one too. But it'll go down to a lot of different sizes. And this is an adjustment for the spring tension on this. And you usually don't have to mess with it. And uh, for storing these, you can actually set this uh, collar right there. Keep it compact. Well, you can just lay it in a drawer in the toolbox. And you don't have to worry about it. But you want to inspect your stones. See these, this one hasn't been used a whole lot. and You'll start seeing it wear off on the corners here when they start wearing down. Kind of like how this one's starting. And you can usually replace these. These are just uh, pop riveted on. And uh, you can usually change these out. Some of them are actually glued on, your cheaper hones. That's why I went with the Craftsman because I figured it'd be riveted on. It'd be a little bit better quality. Okay, so the next thing you need to do is uh, you need to figure out what type of lubricant you want to use while you're honing it because you don't want to hone it dry because it can scratch it and everything. Some people like to use uh, penetrating oil like WD-40. Some people use diesel like just regular old diesel fuel. Other people use kerosene and I've heard of people using motor oil before too. Many things better than nothing. And you want a light oil, like a WD-40 or something, or diesel fuel or something like that. Or if you could find like a 10 weight oil, it would be about perfect. But you just want something in there, and you want to spray it every so often. And uh, you don't want to run the hone too fast. If you run it too fast, you're going to get the uh, horizontal score marks in it. And if you run it too slow, you're going to get more vertical Line. So you got to get the speed just right and keep checking it. You want the lines to cross just like that, like you've seen in the cylinder there. You can use just about any type of drill, as long as you can get a low speed out of it, because it don't have to be going fast. And you can run it like this, if you want to do it horizontal, or you can do it like I do. I usually put it in the floor. Okay, as you see, I got it sitting on the floor. I'm going to stand on the inside of the box to keep it steady. I'm going to go ahead and... Spray the cylinder a little bit and my shoe in the process. And you want to spray the stones. And you're ready to go. Another thing, you want to make sure you're not bottoming this out because sometimes you can hit something inside it. You also see this is a flexible shaft so you don't have to worry about trying to hold it perfectly straight, but you want to as straight as possible and as soon as you start as soon as you turn that drill on you want to start moving it up and down I like to run it slow about like this and how long you need to do it depends on how bad the cylinder is and how uh, what grit your stones are You hear that noise, that's the stone bottoming out, hitting something in the block before doing that. You want to make sure you're covering the full length of the cylinder. If you're just doing part of it, you're going to get an uneven wear pattern in there or have a flat spot. And we can take a look at it, see what it's looking like. And the pattern's starting to form. It's a little bit rough, so I'm going to speed the drill up just a little bit. Not much. And then soak it again. You can't really use too much when you're doing this. If you got somebody helping you, you can have them 
way you're doing is shoot some in there every so often. That's actually the best way to do it. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit here. You don't want to go crazy with it either because it usually don't take a whole lot. You just if you do it too much, you're just taking the life out of the engine on your own. That's about what you want it to look like. If it's good and even, if you start seeing a dollar a flat spot, kind of like how this is, that's usually a wear spot or your cylinders out around. So you can usually tell just in after a couple of seconds what kind of condition your uh, cylinder is in. I want to do just a little bit more to get a little more even at the top there. And we're going to call it done. Because I don't want to go crazy with it. This box in good shape anyway. I'd say we're good to go. We'll look at it on the bench. It's hard to get the camera to focus in on it. I look, the angle is not exactly like it was from the factor. I got just a little bit less, but I think it'll be all right. Uh, you can see there. So that one mark right there, that's probably where I sped it up there towards the end. But overall, I'd say it looks pretty good. We'll look down in there. Wipe it out a little bit. Get a better idea of what it looks like. Oh yeah, it's probably good enough. Like I said, you don't want to go crazy with it. Cause... There's another type of hone too. It's got all kinds of abrasive balls on it, and that works uh, good too. Some people prefer that. I ain't never used it. I've always used the stone type, and uh, I think you get a little finer finish with that ball type. And uh, yeah, that's about uh, about all there is to honing a cylinder. So, now once you get this done, you don't want to just start putting it together. You want to take a brush, scrub brush, and soap and water. You want to scrub that cylinder and any other places you can get to, then I recommend pressure washing it to get any particles out of it. Abrasive particles or metal particles or anything. Because you get one piece of grit in there and it can do some serious damage. As you can see, you're getting metal all over everything when you do this. And uh, even though it's harder to clean out, you still want to clean out in there as good as possible. A very important tip, uh, after you uh, run the engine for about 20 or 30 minutes, you want to drain that oil and uh, probably drain it after every hour. This is on a small engine and uh, the way you're getting as much uh, metal particles out of it as possible because this type of engine don't have an oil filter. If your engine has an oil filter, you still want to change it because uh, it could be real fine particles in there. As you can see that you you don't want that in the oil. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this uh, this box in really good shape, and I just got through surfacing this. You got another video on that if you're interested in that. I'll put it in up there. You can actually see the home marks better on the bottom part. Some of those marks are probably the factory because the rings don't contact this bottom part, just the piston does. And uh, if it looks like that, you did it about right. right. And, uh, see, I got a pretty good angle on it. It'll 
they'll seed in in no time anyway. You think you'd be able to feel it because it looks like it's really scratched up, but you can't even feel it. You can't even feel it with your finger now. But uh, like I said, don't try to go crazy and bore it out with a hone like that because you're not going to be able to do it. So if you got any questions about uh, honing uh, small engine cylinders, leave me a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching.